isotopic symbols. Um, the letter A here represents the mass number. So mass number can either be in the upper left hand corner or it can be shown after a dash. Z would be our atomic number and is shown in the lower left. If there's no number in the lower left though, you can look for the atomic number on the periodic table. If there's a charge, then it's shown in the upper right. So if we have our symbol, it would be up here as a charge. If it's a positive charge, that means we have more positive particles or more protons. If it's a negative charge, then we have more negative particles or the electron. So if we look at these four examples, we have the element bromine, so I can look on the periodic table and see that bromine is number 35, so I have 35 protons. The charge, negative 1, means that I have to have one more negative particle or one more electron than I have protons, so I have 36 electrons. For neutrons, we take the mass number, which remember is in the upper left, 78, minus the number of protons, 35, and so we would have 43 neutrons. Okay, so this plus 1 in the upper right hand corner is my charge. The number that comes after the dash is my mass number. It's sodium, so element sodium is number 11 on the periodic table. It has a plus one charge, which means I have to have one more proton than electrons. But if I change my protons to 12, I'm now talking about magnesium instead of sodium. So your protons can't change. So what has to happen is the electrons change. So instead of having 11 electrons, I have 10 electrons, which gives me one more proton. For neutrons, we take the mass number, minus the protons, and I get 13. Okay, so if we look at the next one, we have calcium, and on the periodic table, calcium is number 20. It's a plus 2 charge, which means I have to have two more protons than our electrons, so that would be 18. And then for neutrons, we would say 41 minus 20 gives us 21 neutrons. Phosphorus is number 15 on the periodic table, so we have 15 protons. The negative 3 means I have to have three more negatives. So 15 would be 18 negatives. Protons, 32, I'm sorry, the neutrons, you take the mass number minus the protons, and we would have 17. If you notice, 3 and 4, example 3 and example 4, um, have in common their number of electrons. When you have the same number of electrons, if you're two different isotopes with the same number of electrons, then you're said to be isoelectronic. So iso means same, and then electronic refers to the number of electrons. The relative atomic mass is based on carbon-12. So carbon-12 has a mass of 12 amu. It has six protons and six neutrons. It was chosen because they're even numbers, or the same numbers. The mass number refers to one specific isotope, but the average atomic mass refers to all natural isotopes. So mass number is for one atom, but the average atomic mass, because it's the all the natural isotopes, is for the element. And it's the one that's listed on the periodic table. All right, so you have one atom, that's the mass number, it has to be a whole number. If you take all the different types of isotopes out there and you average them, then that's the average atomic mass and that's the one that's on the periodic table and it's a decimal number. When we're in the lab, we don't deal with one atom, we don't deal with um, two atoms, we deal with a whole bunch of atoms so that we can see them. So we, there needs to be a way of relating the mass to the number of atoms that we're looking at and that's by the unit mole. Mole is the amount of a substance. It's a counting unit. So like dozen means 12. The mole means a specific number. 
um, one mole is Avogadro's number of whatever you're looking at. So if we're talking about atoms, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. If we're talking about molecules, then one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, so on and so forth. So Avogadro's number is that many things in one mole. Now if we're talking about mass, then it's the number on the periodic table. So molar mass and the average atomic mass are the same thing. The units are grams per mole, mass of one mole, um, and we're going to always go to one decimal place. So if we look on the periodic table at sodium, which is number 11, we want to go to one decimal place. On the periodic table, it's 22.989770. We want to go to one decimal place. Well, the 8 is going to round the 9 to a 10, which changes that to a 3. So the molar mass would be 23.0. For oxygen, on the periodic table, it is 15.9994. So one decimal place would be the 0.9. Well, that's followed by a 9, so the 9 would round to a 10, which would round to a 6. So it's 16.0. For nitrogen, it's 14.0067. One decimal place would be 0 0.0. The next step follows is a 0, so we're not going to change that, so it's just 14.0. Now, not all decimals, or not all masses, end in 0. So if we look at three more, let's look at magnesium, sulfur, and chlorine. On the periodic table, Magnesium is 24.3050, so the molar mass would be 24.3. The zero doesn't make it round up. Sulfur on the periodic table is 32.065, so the molar mass, 32.0. The next number is a six, so that's going to round it up. So it's 32.1 grams per mole. And for chlorine, we have 35.453. So 35.4, the 5 is going to round the 4 up, so it's 35.5 grams per mole. So sometimes it's a perfect number, 0 0.0, other times it is not. But you're always going to round to one decimal place, so you are going to be required to put the 0, .0 if that's the case. Now, molar mass is easy if it's just an element because you're just copying down the number. But if we're talking about a compound, more than one type of atom, then we're going to need to add them from the periodic table. All right, so I know I have in number one two elements because I have two capital letters. So calcium's molar mass is 40.1 plus oxygen's molar mass, 16.0. So if I was to add that together, calcium oxide has a molar mass of 56.1 grams per mole. In number two, I have three capital letters, so I'm going to add up three masses. The subscripts tell you how many of that element you have. So I have two hydrogens, I have four oxygens, I have one sulfur. One is an understood subscript. So we're going to say two times the mass of hydrogen, which is one, plus the mass of sulfur, which is 32.1, plus four times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16. And we get 98.1 grams per mole. If there's a set of parentheses, then you're going to distribute. What that parenthesis is saying is that we have NH4 NH4S. So we have two nitrogens, 2 times 14.0, plus 8 hydrogens, 8 times 1, plus 32.1. And we get 68.1.